our level is starting to look like something that might actually look halfway decent now that we've added a couple of uh, fancy lights to it, even though I threw them uh, in kind of willy-nilly. But there's one thing that we still definitely need to talk about as far as the looks and the artistic vision of your game goes, and that is adding post-processing, because you can't just do things with lighting. Sometimes you need to add in a post-process volume. As long as you're inside of this volume over here with your player, the game will render in whatever way you specify in all the myriad of options you have here on the right hand side. So for now we're going to just show you that through increasing the global gamma. And let's make it a little bit bigger so it's easier for me to walk into. And then when I play from here you can see everything is normal the moment I walk into it you can see our post-processing effect takes place. It's important to note that it's not your character's position, but it's the position of the camera rendering your current view that needs to overlap with the post-processing volume for it to work. So that's also a reason why I want things to be a little bit bigger, usually. So let's make a post-processing volume that encompasses this entire inside until we go to the outside. So we have a different look on the inside and the outside and then we'll work on what it actually needs to look like because the way it looks like right now it's just not that good and we should be able to do that in brush editing mode because the post processing volume is just a brush so the way we can do that is just select that and theory maybe the brush even gets cut up i don't think it gets cut up by any subtractive brushes actually that's good that's very good we wouldn't want that <laughs> Let's make it a little bit bigger than the box itself and actually not in this direction because here I really wanted to, as soon as we go outside, start showing the way I want it to look like outside. Well, now this thing is big enough to show in the entire inside here. Let's go over all of the options after I have reset my gamma because I don't want the gamma to look like this. There's no way I'm going to show you literally every option in here because that's going to take way too goddamn long. But we can start with a couple of often used things like uh, this mobile depth of field I'm not going to talk about. Uh, but bloom is, well, the amount of blooming that highlighted areas have. So we can see here, for instance, this has uh, a quite a bit of brightness on it. Let's increase the intensity for the bloom, and you can see there's a little bit of a glowiness effect to it, which we'll have seen in quite a few games. And you can set the threshold as to what parts of your image will need to bloom and what parts won't need to bloom. Personally, I want to warn you, it's very easy to overdo it with the bloom, and just adding a lot of bloom doesn't make your game look good. You might think that it does at first, you're going to regret doing that later. Don't overdo it. Do add some, because having none at all also looks weird and unnatural, but don't add too much. So the intensity being at 8 is uh, less than optimal. <laughs> yeah, I'll extend this down and just show you what it looks like when the bloom is turned down versus turned up. That's the effect that bloom has. And you can see turning it entirely off doesn't look that good. But just setting it to one is usually really all you need. Just having a little bit of bloom because that is how cameras work. And for inside, I'll do a little bit more. We've got a bunch of advanced options, which I'm not going to talk about. Now, going through a couple of things real fast is chromatic aberration. I'll show you through turning up the intensity. It's the discoloration in a vignette effect. So at the corners of your screen, the discoloration between the red, green and blue channel being separated from each other is going to be more intense while the while the center of the screen doesn't have it as bad and we have a start offset to say i only wanted to affect the very edges of the screen for instance or literally everything usually not an effect that you throw on things too often i'll admit but it's a cool effect to add in certain situations we can add a dirt mask and i don't know if we have any dirt textures with the engine by default it doesn't look like we do which makes this kind of hard to show off. But we can try to do it while looking into the sun. So when you're looking at something bright, the dirt mask is going to be kind of an overlay in the very bright hotspot. So if we turn up the intensity here and you look at this spot over here, you'll start seeing the texture that I put in. In this case, that's a little bit of a weird texture because of course it's a, it's a brick wall. <laughs> and I, I, I don't think I have any 
Do I have just a noise texture, maybe? Brutal not. Well, that feels a little bit better already. So we can use that to just make things feel a little more imperfect. That is the name of the game, making something look good, is getting rid of perfection. Which sounds really weird, I know, but things aren't perfect in the real world. If you want to make things look realistic, you're going to need to add imperfections. Because most of the things you make through processes or digitally are going to be too perfect. We have some camera settings here, which I'm not going to touch at the moment because they are not all that relevant, to be honest with you. Same with your local exposure. If you're interested in this kind of stuff, it's more cinematography related and it's very good stuff to know. But I'm trying to keep this a little bit compact and these aren't the most important. We have lens flare options. Fucking always love having a good lens flare. It's pretty self-explanatory. These just generate dynamic lens flares when you look at a bright source of light. So we have an intensity slider, of course, as always. How intense are they? We have the tint. If we want to give them a certain color within this post-processing volume, we can do that. So let's make all the lens flares within here like a pinkish color. I like that. The bokeh size is pretty much just how blurry or how big, you could say, the lens flare is. So in this case, that would be insane lens flares, which we might even be able to see from the inside. No. But that is where the threshold comes in. The threshold is how light something needs to be in order to generate a lens flare. So here we have this, and if we put this up way too high, well, the sun is just too bright to cut out altogether, it seems. But if we turn it down instead, we can start seeing other things casting lens flares as well. In this case, I think it's the reflection on this white block that's casting one. Easier to see if we turn down the bokeh. And now we can see there's quite a few things here casting lens flares into our player. So we want to increase the bokeh for that a little bit and probably increase the threshold again. And now we have some more subtle lens flares that we can maybe work with a little bit better. And again, we can put in textures for the bokeh shape, but I think that's pretty self-explanatory as well. We have some vignetting options. So if we want to have a vignette here, which actually inside here in our little dungeon area for like of a better term it's probably a good idea to have next up we have the depth of field something that a lot of games these days really also like to overdo but it can make things look a lot better so a lot of this stuff is pretty technical so i'm just going to go over them real quick the sensor width is more or less just how out of focus your background will be the squeeze factor is how squeezed the blur in the background will look and then we have your focal distance which is the part of your scene that is actually in focus and this is a bit of a trial and error thing you want to have your player in focus of course and everything else being slightly out of focus and this whole depth of field thing can give very interesting impressions because as you can see through everything being so out of focus in both the foreground and background it makes my character feel smaller because usually this shallow of a focus meaning that there's very little that's actually sharp in focus is usually only done in cinematography with actual cameras with macro photography or macro filming meaning you're filming something up really 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 close emulating that shallow depth of field can result if you have a wide shot like this is in it feeling like you have a much smaller space and if you're making something like a, a toy story game for instance would be a very good use of a technique like this let's add the sensor width to something slightly more reasonable and if we want to come back up here to the camera settings if we change the aperture that also messes with the depth of field in a much better way so if we set this to one our depth of field becomes more shallow uh, but in a much more realistic believable way so as you can see now things we're still fairly small compared to the environment of course but we don't feel as miniature and finally we get to the color grading stage which is funnily enough probably one of the more important stages here we can uh, change the temperature that we use either color temperature or white balance and just as i talked i think in the lighting video um, we can change the color balance here. Uh, this goes the other way. This is kind of like color compensation. So that's because we've got it set to white balance. 
we set it to color temperature we have low values being more orange and red higher values being more blue and then the tint goes from green to magenta so we can do some really wacky shit with that of course if you want to color things and not use this we also have these color wheels over here so we can set the saturation which just makes things look more saturated i think one well maybe 1.2 is pretty good for this we've got the contrast which makes brighter things brighter darker things darker we can actually maybe even lower that a little bit for this area the gamma is just the overall brightness of your whole image so you can for instance increase the gamma and contrast together and if we then turn off the post processing altogether you can see it gives the entire image a bit of a boost without feeling too washed out the gain does something similar to the gamma um it's a very technical explanation as to what the difference between the two of them is so i'm not going to go into it too much right now and the offset once again does something that is also very similar but in a much more ugly way so we're not going to use it then we have those same options for the shadows the midtones, and the highlights the shadows are the dark parts of your image which the cutoff you can influence by this shadow max so if we put the offsets here to one just to show you it will only offset things it considers shadow all the way up and if we decrease what it considers shadow now we get this weird looking thing and if we increase what it considers looking at when it looks at the shadows it does all that so you can use this as a more accurate way to for instance if we want to increase the gamma on the shadows that will just make the shadowy parts of our scene a little bit lighter and then if we increase the contrast in the shadows again it's doing the same operation as it did before on the whole image but it's taking the brightest shadows and the darkest shadows and doing the operation on that instead of the brightest parts of the whole image and the darkest parts of the whole image meaning that it's better at preserving detail when you do it specifically on the shadows then you'll see the midtones doesn't have one of these max sliders are where the highlights do the midtones is literally just anything that is above a shadow and not yet considered a highlight and the highlights of course are the brightest parts of your image now we've got a bunch of global illumination stuff which we're also not going to be touching right now and everything else is pretty secondary for the time being i've already given you much much overload in information i want to talk about one last thing though and that is the possibility to add your own post-processing materials you can add your own materials that you can design to have your own specific post-processing effects we'll walk through this post-processing and see the change from jumping from the inside to the outside while where we won't have the post-processing any longer and then i'll show you in my own project one of the post-processing materials that i have created to show you the capabilities that you have at your fingertips here so first and foremost this is no post-processing you can see we don't have the lens flares and stuff because i was dumb and didn't extend the post-processing volume far enough then this does have the post-processing on it because these cameras well this one not but that first camera is inside the post-processing volume and you'll see when i walk forward here suddenly we have the lens flares and everything else like that and everything is a little bit brighter because we are now in the post-processing volume and we can jump onto this and we get a look that we just created which admittedly is a little overdone but you, you kind of get the point right so then we jump out of here and we can immediately see our post-processing is gone again there's one way to fix that if you want to make a post-processing volume that just encapsulates the entire world we can look up boundless unbounded infinite extent whatever you want to call it if you tick that no matter where you are in the world you're going to have this post-processing effect enabled so we're outside the volume now but we still have the lens flares and all that good stuff so if we play from here we'll probably be yeah very bloomy because we have direct sunlight on this very reflective looking character so this is what i mean with you can overdo it with the bloom don't overdo it with the bloom so here in one of the rooms of my own game that has a little bit of 
level design already put into it. I have this post-processing volume that creates all of these little lines around the outsides of objects and uh, where the normal maps, which we haven't talked about what normal maps are yet, but don't worry about that, uh, create. So we can look into this, and then if we go into my post-processing materials, we can see my line shader. I have it set to very low at the moment, but we can set it to much higher. It creates these black outlines around geometry, and that can be real nice. So if we turn that off, that's how big of a difference it can make. The grass, it looks a little bit messy. I will be ready to admit I'm still working on seeing what exactly I want to do with the grass, whether or not I want to exclude that from the post-processing. I probably will end up doing that. Uh, but we can just look at this, uh, and it is a material which has a parent material, and that parent material has a metric ton of different nodes which actually, it's not all that bad. I do have a full tutorial on making this specific post-processing material together with a couple of other ones to create a pixel art look for your 3D game already on the channel. So if I don't forget, I'll try to leave them below in the description. But this post-processing, it's good for color grading and all kinds of visual effects like the chromatic aberration or vignetting. This is where the real power comes in. Programming in your own materials which do things that you want them to do. The possibilities are quite literally pretty much endless. So now we've looked at a little bit of more artistic input to create your games. And next time, I think we will keep going with that because our level still has this material on literally everything. I think it's time we start talking about applying some materials and making some materials of our own to make things actually start looking good. And a very big thank you to all of my Patreons. You can see them on screen right now. If you want to help out supporting the channel, there's a link down below in the description to the Patreon page. And a special thank you to Eleanor for supporting at the Cave Digger tier on Patreon.